Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Monday, June 24th, and here looking at the Atlantic, not much going on. All we really have is a little tropical wave here moving towards the Lesser Antilles, fairly potent one though, and it's interesting uh, that these waves have been a little bit more potent this year than usual, I feel. It's hard to quantify that, uh, but it has been my feeling that the waves have been a little stronger than usual so far this year. Remember we had one earlier this month out here in the Central Atlantic that could have been upgraded to a tropical depression if it was uh, later in the calendar year, uh, but it is hard to upgrade things that only last for about 24 hours before dying as that system did. But in general, the waves have been pretty potent this year so far, and that could come into play later as we get into July, and I'll bring that up later in the video. But for now, the only real action in the tropics is uh, this storm, uh, tropical storm Cosme, developing in the eastern Pacific, and boy is it massive. Absolutely gigantic circulation here. Will not be a threat to land except possibly this island of of, I think it's called Socorros um, in west of Mexico and this will be sideswiping it here as it moves off towards the west northwest and then once it reaches the colder water where the stratocumulo field is it will end up dying to the colder water as most eastern Pacific storms do. But this is a big indicator of what is coming because here is the MJO uh, now analyzed into phase 7 as of uh, yesterday. And a phases 7 and 8 here, when they're amplified like this, really favor upward motion in the eastern Pacific. And you can see that here, obviously, with Cosme. Uh, the MJO likely contributed largely to its formation. You can see the mass of convection here. Now, Cosme itself is going west, but all of this convective... Um, upward motion pulse is moving eastward with the MJO and will eventually make its way into the Caribbean and the rest of the tropical Atlantic as the European shows here moving into phases one and two and phases one and two um, favor upward motion in the Atlantic and that's when we get the most tropical developments especially early on in the year when the MJO really controls when we get tropical development it's very hard to get development uh, without the favor of the MJO before August and September when it starts to matter a little bit less. But here in the early season when the MJO is behaving like this and moving outside of this inner circle where it doesn't mean much when it's outside that inner circle and it does stuff like this, it's really nice for uh, forecasting when tropical development may occur. And this is the European showing that. Now, uh, we haven't seen a pulse this strong in phase two in a while, and I decided to write a script quickly before this video to parse out uh, the MJO database, which goes back to 1974 when we had uh, satellite data coming in. And uh, I looked for years uh, during the first half of July when the MJO phase was as strong as the European forecasts it to be in phase two, and only three years actually came up. It's actually a fairly s strong amplitude. But the three years that came up were, first of all, 2004, on July 13th, no development occurred anywhere near that time. But the next year was 2010 on July 15th. And a week later on July 22nd, we had Bonnie form in the Bahamas move across Florida and into the Gulf. And this was a weakling system, kind of a joke at the time, but it was a tropical development that occurred. And the third year uh, that was on the list of MJO pulses similar to this one uh, was 1996, uh, July 3rd. And two days after that, on July 5th, we had uh, Hurricane Bertha form out here in the Central Atlantic, actually. And this became quite a hurricane for early July or mid-July and ended up moving into North Carolina as a cat to very strong storm major hurricane coming out of the central Atlantic uh, in the first half of July very impressive for that time so two out of three years that had a similar MJO pulse to what the European is forecasting since 1974 had tropical developments come from them so this kind of pattern has done it before and it could do it again which is reason enough uh, to keep a close eye on things now here's the GFS ensemble forecast for the mean 500 millibar height for day 8 valid on July 2nd. And notice we have a trough sitting over the Mississippi Valley trapped in this region because we have a lot of blocking or uh, at least ridging around it here, kind of keeping the westerly flow in place and uh, st uh, locking this trough in for at least a few days. And what this does is, uh, remember on the eastern side of troughs, surface pressures tend to lower uh, to the southeast of them, and that means that it's destroying the pressure gradient between the southeast in U.S. and the Caribbean. In other words, air is not really able to pile up in this region, which means I don't think we have to worry about tropical development uh, in the Western Caribbean and the Bahamas as long as this trough is here. However, on the back side of the trough, pressures are going to tend to rise in here. As you can see on the uh, mean sea level pressure anomaly, see the lower pressures here 
higher pressures behind the trough and when this happens you can start to get development uh, possibly in the Bay of Campeche we may have to watch that area because the pressure gradient is increased there and the tail ends of these upper troughs here tend to drop down and on their back side when pressures are building to the north you can get some convergence in here and so we may have to watch in the same region that tropical storm Barry just recently formed in and you can kind of see the pressures are a little bit lower on the GFS ensemble mean here in northern Mexico in the Bay of Campeche so we may have to watch that um, in early July that would be uh, next week uh, now the CMC, the Canadian model, as usual up to its old tricks, bringing a hurricane into New Orleans on day 9 on July 3rd, so it's, a much, it's much more aggressive with the situation, but this storm actually takes a track out of the Western Caribbean. The originating disturbance is actually south of Panama, which is a little bit funny because that probably will not happen. Uh, but again, the Canadian, as I've said many times before, is usually over aggressive on these types of situations. It did nail Andrea, but that was only after it was within five days of verification. A Canadian forecast for a hurricane hitting the Gulf Coast on day 9 almost never verifies. So until a more reliable model picks this up, I would not worry about it. To me, it looks more like the pattern with this upper trough here favors development in the Bay of Campeche, if at all. Um, not so much over here. So I would not worry about this unless we start seeing it for some reason on the other models. Now what I think gets more interesting, all of this is before July 5th here. I think after July 5th, things get a little more interesting because that's when the MJO really starts to come farther east and really get into phase two for the Atlantic. And uh, it's starting to show up um, on the CFS. Uh, notice the forecast for week two zonal wind anomaly. What this means is the east-west component of the wind. So the orange colors here indicate anomalous westerly winds coming out of the eastern Pacific. Purple colors anomalous easterly and you can see them converging here in the Caribbean. And this is where we could start to see uh, some interesting developments uh, after July 5th in the Caribbean and this area may have to be watched for development after the upper trough in the Mississippi Valley clears out that area may have to be watched and then watch week three see how the orange colors the westerly wind burst comes all the way out into the central Atlantic and now this starts to get interesting because we've had a big high um, over in the central Atlantic uh, stronger than normal Bermuda high for most of this month and uh, this is going to remain here and I've told you before that strong Bermuda highs are generally bad for Atlantic tropical activity because they create strong trade winds to their south and that prevents low pressure from forming however when the high is farther north than normal as it has been it brings the trade wind branch farther north with it so you can see with the purple colors here the trade winds are anomalously far to the north which allows this westerly wind burst to come in from the south and what this creates is cyclonic vorticity where you get the air tending to spin between these two streams of air and you can start to get low pressure here in the central Atlantic and this is interesting because although it's still a little bit early, we're talking about the first half of July, the waves uh, that have been coming off Africa have been stronger than normal this year. And if some of these waves start to come off and move into this area of enhanced vorticity, we could have a chance for early development east of the Lesser Antilles Islands somewhere in this area during weeks three and four and uh, into the middle part of July. And that will be interesting to watch. And it's actually showing up on the CFS. And I'm going to take a minute to explain this plot because I made it and not many people have actually seen it or know what it means. So this is the CFS, which is basically a version of the GFS that is coupled with the ocean and is integrated out to a very long time scale forecasts. It's meant for monthly forecasts, uh, but it is run every day and it can be used for weekly forecasts with some skill if it's used properly. Now what I've done is I've taken the black contours here, the mean of the last 48 forecasts of the CFS, um, I set them up like an ensemble and then each one of these red numbers indicates a different low pressure area indicated by one of those forecasts and uh, usually uh, on a typical day in the Atlantic you would see a lot of red numbers a whole belt of them down here um, with the intertropical convergence zone too far south to develop but when you start seeing red numbers to the north like this near 15 north latitude that's when we have to start um, uh, 
looking at those as potential tropical storms or at least very strong tropical waves uh, which you can see here on the CFS starting to show up on day 15 here which is valid July 9th and uh, the background colors greens and yellows here indicate ensemble disagreement and uh, when you see a lot of disagreement it means that at least some of the members are showing significant disturbances in the pressure field and you can see some of those developing here and then if we go out to day 20 look what happens we have an entire belt of uh, areas of low pressure shown by the CFS extending from the Cape Verde Islands all the way up towards the Bahamas and all of these are potential low pressure centers shown by any of these 48 recent forecasts from the CFS model and uh, I point this out because this has been showing up consistently now on the CFS and even on the GFS now in the tail end of its ensemble runs and this is indicating that the Central Atlantic may be lighting up with some tropical waves that may be more potent and possibly developing into tropical cyclones even though it's still a little bit early in the year. Uh, that's something to watch in the long range though. Uh, still about 20 days away before that pattern really lights up. It'll be the Caribbean first and perhaps the Bay of Campeche but then out here I think between July 5th and 20th uh, may see some interesting activity that we're not used to seeing at this time of year. Here's uh, the Japanese model showing upward motion in blue colors uh, for week two here and sinking motion in the eastern Pacific and then weeks three and four it really doesn't change. This is a very typical MJO phase two pattern with upward motion from Africa to the Gulf of Mexico. Sinking air in yellow showing up in the eastern Pacific. This causes air to converge in here and this is really a pattern that favors development in the Atlantic. We can't really guarantee that a storm will form in a pattern like this but as with Andrea and Barry we can set up the pattern, see that it's favorable for development. We know that it's happened before, and uh, you can see, again, one of these storms in 96 in a similar MJO pulse was actually a storm that formed east of the Antilles Islands and became a hurricane in mid-July. So it has happened before, and uh, thus we should watch for it to happen again in the same type of pattern. That's all we're doing here. Uh, but again, still a couple weeks off for most of that activity. Perhaps next week we'll start to see the Bay of Campeche light up as we looked at, uh, but that's still about a week away, and I will keep you up to date. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.